since I'm watching my phone. Okay, so first of all, our illustrious leader over the past state, over the past year, our state deputy Steve Bolton and his lovely wife Jane. Father John Nineman. Oh, excuse me, I forgot to say priest of the year. Also. Okay, next in line, our worthy state secretary and our state deputy elect. Noel Penlulio and his wife Pamela. And seated with Noel State Chaplain Designate, Reverend John Anthony Gossett. <laughs> Treasurer and State Secretary elect Brother Rene Trevino and his wife Carla. And sitting with him, past State Chaplain, Emer State Chaplain Emeritus, Father John Grace O. S. is our Supreme Representative for our convention today, our Regional Territorial Growth Director of the West, a past State Deputy of the State of Oregon, a now former State Warden of the State of California, <laughs> Brother Bob Dude Kish and his wife Susan. <laughs> State Advocate and State Treasurer elect Brother Greg Marock and his daughter Gabby. <laughs> state Program Director, State Warden, State Advocate elect Larson. <laughs> The newest person to join the illustrious group, State Warden Elect, Operations Director, former Master of the Central District, Brother Ken Rose. Somewhere in the audience, our membership director, there he is, right here, Brother Michael Jones and his wife, Teresa. Where's he hiding? Oh, okay, there we go. I told your father I wouldn't miss you on purpose. Well, that's true. So, former state chaplain, our very good friend, Father John Cantwell. We have some past state deputies with us. If you could all please stand. Uh, they're seated at the tables here. Brother Ed Hustis, Romy Quevedo, Sonny Santinez, Ray Warner, Tim Carvalho, Ross Willauer. And I know seated with them somewhere. Oh, the Shabayla. And also, the, where's Lisa Spragan? Is, is she sitting with us? There's Lisa. Thank you. If you could also stand 
Brother Ross, that means you have to do it again. <laughs> Ross Willauer, President of the Retirement Home. Dan Lucas, President of the Museum Corporation. Ray Warner, President of the, the Frank Nigro Columbian Foundation. Pat Brown, President of the Columbian Properties. Did I miss anybody? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Also, we have a, three very distinguished guests seated here with the state deputy. I would like to introduce the president of Special Olympics Northern California, David Solo, and his fiancée, Ann Friedrich. President of Special Olympics Southern California, Calvin Lyons and his wife Julie. Yeah. Special Olympics President Emeritus of Southern California, and a member of our own board of directors for the Frank Nigro Columbia Foundation, our very good friend Bill Schumard. Yeah. Okay. How about the masters that are in the room? And if you can stand up, I see the Northern Master Tim Fukuda, the Vice Supreme Master seated with him, Dave Ryan, past state deputy of Nevada, also. Ray Forget, the Southern California Master, and his wife, Denise. And uh, Dwight, Dwight got away. You met Dwight earlier. He did the pleasure of the so. Okay. Am I off the hook yet? Ah, how could I do that? The cameraman, he's going to put me out of focus. <laughs> that might be a good thing, though. Immediate past state deputy, Brother Dave Abbott. My name is Gene Hayes. I know you don't really care about that. I'm the <laughs> co-chairman of this event this weekend with Brother Ed. Ed did all the hotel work. I did a lot of the paperwork. But really, the brains behind me doing the paperwork from the state office, my lovely wife, Anna Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not that serious, brother. It's not that serious, brother. <laughs> okay. Like I said, remind me when I miss somebody else. So first up on our program for this evening is a message regarding the future. It's a little bit backwards of our okay. technical textbook protocol, but we're going to start with the future go back to the future, I'd like to invite a really state deputy-elect, wow. Noel Penlilio, for a message to the group. Thank you, buddy. I said this when I accepted it again. Wow. 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 Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I wouldn't go to the little name my worthy brothers and sisters in Christ. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. As I mentioned a while back, as uh, the state deputy elect for Colombian year 2021-2022, I am very grateful for all the trust that and support that you have given to me, to my family, to lead our beloved state council to a new beginning. I mentioned also this, uh, I think this morning, that perhaps you might be wondering why a new beginning. It has been a very challenging past year for the state deputy with a COVID-19 pandemic. It really hit, it really hit us hard, very hard, leading to not only the closure of businesses around us, 
but our daily lives have been tremendously altered and affected. If you remember, it was December of 2019 that this dreaded virus came, came into the horizon. It appeared outside the country. It started in China and became full-blown here in the United States on March 2020. The pandemic had led to lockdowns of communities and most of all, our beloved churches. Now that we have been experiencing lower cases and fatalities because we have been vaccinated and others are being vaccinated, our communities and churches have started to open up. This is, my brothers and sisters, the new beginning. It is the new beginning, and because of that, I want to introduce to you our theme for next year. With the help of Mama Mary, Maria, Mother de Familias, Mary, Mother of the Families, we shall rise again. We shall rise again. Surely we shall rise again with the help of the intercession of our Blessed Mary, Mother Mary. As Father Anthony has mentioned, but our Blessed Mother, who is a mother of all families, a devotee of Mother Mary, she has been there for all of us, despite of us not knowing. For me, deep inside, whenever my life gets out of course, I always ask our Mother of Perpetual Help for assistance. With that said, as we, as we again open up, we implore to her once more to guide and protect us through her intercession to Jesus, our Savior. For this Colombian year, and as we reopen our churches and communities, Supreme, as I mentioned, has introduced a new program. You have heard it from our Supreme Night. It is called the COVID COVID Recovery Program, COVID-19 Recovery Program, or what we call CRP. Supreme has developed a guidebook for this to help us, our councils, to emerge strongly from the recent pandemic. It focuses on how to inspire members and parishioners to become re-involved in our churches and community activities as our council resumed their operations. There are three elements of that program. Parish support, interactions between state and local councils, and the third one, fraternal engagement. In order to gain more knowledge of this, I implore you to look at the Supreme and State website. You could download the program. In line with the Supreme's COVID-19 recovery program, the State Council has developed the goal to build and rebuild stronger councils, parishes, families, and communities. In order for us to easily remember how we can reach this goal, the acronym was made for the word RISE, R-I-S-E. R, letter R, we have to rebuild our councils and churches, reinvigorate our members, and parishioners. Letter I, instill spirituality in our councils, continue to pray for our councils and its members. Letter S, we need to support our clergy, our parishes, our councils through our faith in action activities. And lastly, letter E, we encourage other parishioners and their families to join the Knights of Columbus exemplify new members in our order. It has been years since journey start, since this journey started, my journey. God, God has been so good. Is it not? God is good? All, all the time. time. God is good all the time. He had carried me through this journey, just like the rest of us. There are so many times of uncertainty in our lives that sometimes we tend to give up. However, with prayers and unrelentless faith in Him, we will survive and continue on. Thank you, my Lord. As I remember, 
when I started uh, to this journey as being nominated was state warden by Father Anthony, I, I would be thinking of Psalm 95. What is Psalm 95? Father? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it says, um, we are always leaders in our, uh, in, our, in our own right. If you are called, we are there to serve. Right? I would like I would also like to thank the spiritual guidance of our pastors, our Johns, our Father Johns, uh, and then our Father, we have a new uh, new incoming state chaplain designate, another John, John Anthony, right Father? John Anthony for being there for us. And Father Anthony has been there by my side and for spiritual needs and advice. I do remember, I think it was Father, uh, and, uh, Father, Father Anthony saying, uh, telling a story about three, three, uh, three priests, the cardinal, the bishop, right, Father? Yeah. yeah. So now, as I retired from the medical field, I would like to tell you a story. Okay? There were three doctors walking down the beach, right? We have one, we call a cardiologist, another one, we have a surgeon, and a third one is a neurologist. While they were walk, walk, walking on the beach, they saw a lamp, the genie in the lamp. So they started rubbing that lamp, okay? And they rubbed that lamp, the three of them, and kapoof, you know, the genie turned up. And he said, there are three of you, there are three of you, so I'm going to give you one wish for each one of you. Wow, you know, here comes, here comes the, um, uh, the uh, cardiologist. Uh, what is your wish, he said. Well, my wish is I would be, I would be the most, the most important doctor, you know. So here comes, Kaboom. He became a good cardiologist, a well-known cardiologist, uh, receiving the Nobel Prize. You know, wow, that's good. The second one, the surgeon, saying, what is your wish, says the GD? My wish is that I would gain lots of money. You know surgeons, right? More money, yeah? They cut more money, right? So, you know, here it comes the surgeon being a millionaire with all the millions of dollars, you know? All the millions of dollars in Swiss, Swiss bank so that they would be not detected. So, then the third one. The neurologist, wow, that's a brain. Another brain or what is it? I got one of those. All right, okay. All right the neurologist said, okay, what is your wish that the, the genie asked? Then the genie said, you know, the neurologist, uh, the neurologist says, I would like to be the wisest person in the world. And then here comes the genie giving that wish, you know, and out came. We have the state deputy of this California the state council. <laughs> Welcome, right? How does that sound? Yeah. That was my dream, right? Worthy, so I would like to thank our worthy state, uh, our worthy state deputy here, and thank you, past state deputy Steve Bolton, for being bold, leading and steering our state council in the past Colombian year, as we have sailed through tumultuous waves yeah, and uncharted waters due to the pandemic. I am also thankful to all of you, my brothers and your families, for all the support you have given to the State Council and to my fellow state officers. But mostly, I want to thank my brothers, you all, and the families, my fellow state officers and your families, and my very own family, Fanny, my lovely wife, for 30, 30 31 years. Yeah. And my daughter. My daughters here, Stephanie and Diane, they're, very, they're always there. And for their energy support throughout these years. And as we move to a new beginning this Colombian year, it is not the end of the Colombian year yet. We still have how many weeks to go? Six weeks to go, right? We need to continue that will. So we want to make this year as strong years 
for the state of California. Strong year this year, despite of the pandemic. Are you with me? Yes, yes. yes of course. So we continue that, it's a never ending, but it's a new beginning. And as our word state, that deputy had mentioned, okay, the train is riding, right? Cursing along. But here it comes, a faster than the train, it's the Tesla. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, the new beginning is coming in here. I again thank you for your continued support and prayers and your assistance to make this year, the following year, another successful one. We do this not only for our councils, for our districts, chapters, assembly, our order, but for God's greater glory. Amen? Amen. 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 Viva Jesus. Thank you very much. So everyone, it's not my turn, but uh, because of technology, uh, we have to do a little something. So uh, as all of you know, uh, I've been looking at my phone all weekend. That's because I'm communicating with Ed Broadhurst that's in San Diego that's handling all our webinars. And tonight we have uh, 200 people in this room and we have 275 people online. So uh, Brother Ed, I've told you this so many times, if you could please turn on your camera. Please turn on your camera. So those of you that have never met Ed Broders, this is Ed Broders. Turn your camera back on it. And go to the front day. door. You need to get up and go to the front door. Yep, and then come back and make sure you got your lovely wife with you, okay? And if you got shorts on, leave the camera high. <laughs> talking to Jane, I have uh, about 50 pairs of shorts and I have two pair of long slacks. One I married her in and the other one she's going to bury me in. seen this man all year face to face. Not one time. But I've seen him uh, a few hundred times like this. Maybe more. Uh, you know, when I met Ed is when uh, all of our churches were closed. 
All of our communities were shut down and our president told us to go home. And, uh, and I said, okay, dude, another dude. <laughs> I said, uh, you've done four webinars a year for us now, uh, so I'm gonna have you do four a week. <laughs> and he's done four a week. He's done like six in the last two days, all right? And he's always given it dedication because he knows that I always want the best for you because you deserve nothing less, nothing less. Well, I'm telling you, this man has been a jewel to work with. Uh, most of our masters get upset with him, which is a good thing, because he makes sure they're at their best. All of our degree teams sometimes get concerned with him. He says, stand behind the ambo. 5% of your audience is in front of you and 95% is all over this state. And I love him for that. Okay. Uh, and every state deputy gets to pick a night of the year. Every state deputy. And my pick for the night of the year this year is Brother Edwin Rogers. As I've said to all these guys, there is no free lunch with Bolton. Okay? <laughs> Jane will tell you that, right? But uh, I couldn't have done what I've done this year, as limited as we've been, without you. I couldn't have communicated to all of these guys and all the guys you got online tonight and a whole bunch of others without you. And we wouldn't have brought in 20, 2,500 new members this year without you. And tonight, tonight, while we were at dinner, we got another one. This one slipped on us. But you reminded me later, a few months ago, that we needed to still go get that guy at Special Olympics. So I, I'm here to tell you, we got him tonight. Yay! Our, uh, our membership designate brought him in. I got an email for it. He's already sent an email to David's new grand knight. And David's new grand knight has already sent David an email that he should read on his phone right now. Basically. And that is how online membership works. That's how online membership works. You work for all of us. You have to do that. That's the new way of recruiting. And then that grand knight's going to call David. And he's going to say, I want to convert you to a council-based member. All right? And they'll, they'll make that happen in, in due time. In due time. But again, get back to, get back to you, Ed. Uh, I, can't, uh, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done. And uh, for everything you will do, because we still got six weeks, bro. So you probably got another 25 webinars to do between now and then. But this man has helped me not only put out information, but we did a webinar on church volunteering. All of my state officers were part of that. Uh, we've done training. We've done so many things together to just try to work outside the box. Well, this is the doctor of work outside the box. God bless you, brother Ed. And thank you for everything you do, man. It has been an honor. And I, I learned a new phrase this week uh, from our incoming state deputy. It's just simply, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let, I'll let your lovely wife give you a hug, and then let's go back to work and finish this up. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do it quick. Uh, uh,
<laughs> Very good. So, so you might have caught a glimpse of him, but I would also think we need to acknowledge the field reporter who delivered that award to Brother Ed, chapter secretary to San Diego chapter, Brother Luigi Zoni. to our reg regularly scheduled program <laughs> for a greeting from the Supreme Council, our Regional Territorial Growth Director, Brother Bob Kish. He's a good dude. Congratulations, Ed. Um, I second the award, by the way. <laughs> I agree. That's, that's been there the entire year, and uh, we could have done half of what we've done without him. So congratulations, Brother Ed. Love you, brother. All right, we're the state deputy. Reverend fathers, state officers, brothers, ladies, Special Olympic dignitaries who also here in my heart as well. I don't normally do this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start my presentation with a joke. Matter of fact, I, I never really do that. And uh, Susie said, ah, do you know what I'm, like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's bold, I'm even bold about this. <laughs> I've never been a fan of starting my joke, but we've heard so many good ones all week, I wasn't writing them down. <laughs> This actually, to give credit, uh, this came from the Idaho State Convention. They were probably one of the first ones in the order. About a month ago, they had their convention early April, mid-April. Uh, the Idaho Knights of Columbus uh, support a big uh, organization up there, some pro-life organization that does uh, mobile ultrasounds. They have several centers and things like that. It's, they, they do a lot of work with them. The representative that came to their convention, their state convention, was a Protestant minister to a Knights of Columbus convention. And he opened up with a joke that he ended up getting a standing ovation for. And I have to share it. Oh, it was so good. So a priest, a Protestant minister, and a Jewish rabbi were walking along the beach. <laughs> <laughs> this Jewish rabbi mentioned how he was so upset because he was just informed he's going to be transferred down to Orange County, California. <laughs> now, this part I'm making up. I don't know what that is. <laughs> he was really upset. And then the priest and the minister said, well, why would you be upset? He goes, you know how many Catholics are down there? I'm going to hate it down there. It's going to be horrible. There's no way I want to be down there. So the Protestant minister says, Protestant minister says, I got the same problem. They're wanting me to transfer to Sacramento. Same thing. It's just full of Catholics. I'm going to hate it there. The priest looks at them both and says, you know what? You two can both go to hell because there's no Catholics there. <laughs> Philomath, Oregon, <laughs> the West, <laughs> my home. Also, I know they, they, they couldn't be here because of COVID restrictions, but I'd also like to offer a greeting from our Western Hispanic coordinator, Pona Magana, who does so much in California for us. 
And it's okay if you can give a big hand right now. And the last good radio training director, Ken White, who does so much. State Deputy Ron Boyce of Oregon to pass on his greetings and thank you and appreciation for the Oregon State the Oregon State Deputy for the gift of funds from the Columbia Charities. We heard it earlier from your president. They gave some funds up to help us in Oregon with the fires last summer. The towns of Detroit, Phoenix, Blue River, Vida, and Talent. Gone. Darn. And they're in the process of rebuilding. The charity that California offered and sent up to Oregon really helped to rebuild this. We could not have done it on our own. We weren't prepared for this. You guys have been through this before. You know what it took. And we thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts in Oregon. Thank you. <laughs> Your Columbia Charities president in his uh, report mentioned, I orchestrated a meeting with the uh, Oregon State team and your, uh, your experts on disaster relief here in Oregon, in uh, California. Again, you guys have been through this. They needed help and guidance on what to do with, for the immediate need, but also how we can build something for the future and, and so we're not stuck in this rut again. So with their help, you can now say California has a relief fund we're starting and a process to feed it. And you might, I think I should offer to this, but uh, you might want to know, we, we modeled your 365 program. We're not doing it for the charities, but we're doing it to feed our relief, our, our uh, disaster relief fund. So thank you brothers again of California. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate the newly elected state officers. I look forward to working with you all next year again. Where the state uh, the elect, well, your lovely wife, Fanny. I'm looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks in New Haven. I see learns all the ends of an ounce of being the state deputy. <laughs> Charm school? No, you don't call it charm school. No, there's too much involved. He's already got the charm. What do you call him? Pretty much. Pretty already got the charm. I'm actually looking forward to anticipating, and we've heard it before, bolder things in California next year. As we open up, I think it's, it's going to be a great year for California. I'm looking forward to it. And to my good friends, State Deputy Steve, his lovely wife Jane, thank you. It's been a phenomenal year. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This past year isn't anything like you and uh, Michael Jones, where's he at? You've heard this story before, Michael and, and uh, Steve and I locked ourselves in a room for an entire weekend in Sacramento over a year ago and tried to plan out the year, what it was going to be, what were the incentives going to be. Didn't turn out anything like we expected. But I'm sure there's not one past, dead, one past state deputy in this room that would have wished for the year this man has had. Not one of us, right? I'm a past state deputy, not one of us would want this. Yeah, the good Lord knew what he was doing when he put somebody as bold as you, Steve, in charge of this year. <laughs> but, big but, Noel touched on this too. The year isn't over, brothers. Not over. Six weeks. Heard a lot of good things this weekend. New, new officers, we had some great food, shared some great company, not wearing masks. It's amazing, I love it, love it, love it. But the year's not over yet, not over yet. 
We all witnessed this afternoon all the great things California has done. From the chapters, the districts, the councils, all the awards. It's amazing. This year, we, Supreme, your state team, the councils, really had to think outside the box. We've heard that too many times, I think. But I can tell you, California succeeded in that. It, and it wasn't just Steve, it's an entire team. People like Ed that I know is on the line as well. We had to think how to get this done. And again, California succeeded with that. It did well. California did well. Insurance code, we heard Steve Owens mention that too. Every time Steve mentioned one of the agents and the percentage they hit, I heard a lot of who's and ahs. Oh my Lord. Over 100%, 200, 300% during the pandemic. It's amazing. Again, amazing what, what, what they have done. But again, the year isn't over yet. Several have mentioned and touched on this. There's 250 potential star councils in the state. 250. That would, I think half that might be a record for California. My state deputies correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> maybe Sunny had more, I don't know. Yeah. 125 is there you go. average. Yeah. I think 125 with the pandemic right now, 250 would be a miracle. Yeah. And, and, we, and it can be done, it can be done. The next six weeks, these councils are just literally a form or two away from making it and already hit their membership or Forms are all in, and they're one or two away members from hitting Star Council. They're this close. With a little bit extra effort that we're looking for from the chapter officers, from the engagement teams, Michael, Steve, and I are working with taking some of these chapters and trying to get them to get this done. That you can have 200 plus Star Councils this year. And that'd be a huge win for California through this pandemic. Huge, huge. Brother Anthony, I like what you said. I do love what I do. I do. I honestly believe, and I've told the story several times, that I was called to do this job. I won't get into it here because I'll, I'll need a box of tissues. But I felt that I was called to do this job. I love the order. I love the traveling, like, well, maybe not the traveling city and airports, but I love the order and I love traveling to see people like here, like what we had this weekend. I thrive on this. I love to motivate. I love to talk to Brother Knights. I love to talk to the ladies of the Knights. I like to get us to doing the things we can do. Working with organizations like Special Olympics are phenomenal to work with. I love being a knight and trying to bring more more men and their families to Christ through the nights. I, I, I love this job. And you're right, Father. I love what I do. We love you too, Rob. Oh, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I love it even more when I come to, to do these uh, and meet fantastic team of state officers like we had here. And this all started for me. Um, Back in 2018, when I came to the first meeting in California with Joe Salias, who was your state deputy, Joe and the team then took me in as one of your own. And I reported back to the deputy Supreme Knight, then, who's now our Supreme Knight, how amazed and in awe I was at this working team in California. I, I, I have been seeing this before. It blew me away. And I had to report back to the deputy Supreme Knight. It was phenomenal, and it continues to this day. Susie and I feel most at home here, seriously. It's, uh, it's phenomenal. Two years ago, Dave Babbitt made a proclamation that I'd be a, uh, what'd you call it, California Knight, an honorary California Knight, and I appreciate it. And this morning, I am a, uh, Past state ward <laughs> of the far north. <laughs> north, north. 
It's been phenomenal, and I thank you again. But again, the year's not over. We have a lot of work to do. We need to finish strong this year. I thank you. I think we're looking forward to what we're going to do next year. I don't know. I think I won't say too much more. It's too long already. Um, but anyway, thanks again. Thank you, brothers. Thank you for everybody that's been involved this year. I need to give a big thank you out to Michael Jones. Um, brother from a different mother. I'll tell you what, we, we work awesome together. I love you too. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But anyway, thanks again, folks, uh, brothers, ladies. Lovely to be here. Let's finish the year strong, not for me because I'm saying it, but for the state and for Steve. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, ladies. Next up, we'd like to invite our state deputy, Steve Bolton, for a few reflections of his own and a couple more presentations. She said yes the, the morning after because I forgot to ask her to marry me the night I asked her everything else. Uh, but my mother fixed all that for me and she just told me, she just called her and tell her, you know, so I called her. I said, do you want to be engaged? Do you think we're engaged? And she goes, yeah. Do you want to be engaged? And I said, yeah. I said, you want to go to lunch? She said, sure. And the rest is sister. The rest is sister. 43 years. 43 years. Example she showed me since the day we met, and her father showed me for the rest of his his life. Uh, I'm a Catholic today. I'm a Catholic today. I was a nothing back then. 
but well, that's a different story. Different story. All right? But uh, I was a pig. My sister in law told me that I was a pig. Uh, hear that, dude? I was a pig. All right. So, uh, before I get started here, you know, Bob Kish is uh, the best thing Supreme ever did for me. The best thing. Okay. He, uh, you know, I met him a long time ago uh, when he when he helped Joe, and I watched him help Dave, and I said, you know, the guy just he just puts it out there, puts it out there, and he's made me a better state deputy this year every month, every month with his support, with his guidance, with just being there for me. When uh, when we started, we didn't have much. We didn't have much to go on. Uh, and I'd love to tell you a joke tonight, but I'm a contractor, so all the jokes I know are only for about half of this room. <laughs> but for that half, see me afterwards. I have a, couple of a couple of them involve doctors, too. Because right? uh, I always make sure I get their money up front. <laughs> they, they do not like to deal with their... Raise a bakery, you know that, right? Yes. You gotta watch them doctors, man. Uh, Contractors too. <laughs> man, yeah, that was bold. That was bold. But uh, but what a year! What a year! You know, uh, Jane and I started our our journey uh, when Ed and Flora used to trust us, trusted us with being their service program director. And uh, that year, we raised more money for wheelchairs in California than anywhere in the order, and that record stands today at almost $600,000. That's Ed's legacy. That's Ed's legacy. And then I was the state warden for Sonny and Irma and Annette. Well, I was the assistant state warden, brother. Uh, but I, I was the one with the membership card. Okay? And we worked really hard because Sonny scared my scared me to death the night we installed all the officers, and he was a no-show uh, because he had to go through this little procedure thing. And I'll never forget when Bishop came and said, uh, "Come on, Steve, let's go to mass." And I got all these people lined up, and I said, "Bishop, we can't go to mass. Sonny and Irma aren't here." He said, we don't need them, let's go. And I said, yeah, we kind of do. And, uh, and then I seen him three weeks later in Canada at the Supreme Convention when everybody there thought they seen a ghost. And I learned so much from Sonny. Uh, one thing he, he taught me that I remember to this day, and he said to me many, many times, Steve, it's all about the council. It's all about the council. I already knew that. But he instilled it in me. And uh, thank you, Sonny, for that, that education. And then I served as a uh, state advocate for Romy Coveto, the soldier. And he told me, he said, you know, Steve, uh, those guys that just don't want to get along, uh, no. those are your guys. <laughs> so I'm going to be the state deputy for 99% of the state. You're going to be the state deputy for the other 1%. And we did that. And we hold a record. Uh, it's good to this day. Not a real good record, but uh, but those guys those guys are no longer a member of the next Columbus. And thank you, Romy, for stepping up and being that brave soldier. Okay. And then Joe Solis was elected. And Joe, Joe and I go way back. Uh, but Joe taught us about remembering our faith and just living our faith. And I'll, I'll never, ever forget that. You know, he, uh, Joe had a tough, tough walk to get to the state office and to get to the state deputy, but he walked that walk, and he's a better man for it. And, and he taught me a lot. Okay. And I was the state secretary for the nicest, kindest man I've ever met in my life. All right? I've only seen him mad once. We, we travel a lot of roads together. We've been to in and out together. We've been to uh, International House Pancakes at lunchtime. It is our favorite restaurant. 
Uh, but uh, I seen him mad only once, and I never want to see that again. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, but Dave taught us to just take a deep breath and just think. He led us into this pandemic. He set it up to where we could have services in our home when we couldn't go to mass. And thank you for that, Dave. Because uh, that was important for my wife, it was important for me. Uh, and I learned a lot from him, I still learn. He's, he's my number one techie. <laughs> and as long as Dave's here, my blood pressure is normal. <laughs> when he's not here, you, my state officers will tell you that I'm not the easiest person to get along with. Okay? Uh, then you all elected me your state deputy. But all along that way, <clears throat> Noel came to the family, Renee came to the family, Greg came to the family, and Larson came to the family. That's my state warden. We call him Larson. Only because that lovely lady, that uh, his wife, uh, she called him Larson. Most of the time. Anyway, so I always told these guys that we're going to build a good foundation. I'm going to build a good foundation for them so they can build on that foundation and build us something rock solid to launch off of. That's what I've told them. told them always that it's never been about me. I've tried to make it never about me. It's about us. All of us. All of us. And uh, I didn't realize, you know, uh, contractors deal with inspectors every day. You know, so sometimes it makes a project a little more difficult when you get an inspector that uh, is less than kind. Well, my inspector this year was COVID, COVID. And uh, what a challenge that was. But I made a goal the first of the year. I said, you know, I'm never gonna be Circle of Honor. That ain't gonna happen. I'm a realist, okay. Every other state deputy before me was installed by the Supreme Knight in Connecticut. I was installed by the Federal Express driver in my driveway. <laughs> and he said, take this box and wear it to bring distinction to you and your Please sign here. Right. So that's, that's, that's where I was. Uh, but uh, as my Special Olympics buddies will tell you, uh, I just rolled up my sleeves and I went to work. And I told these guys behind me that I'm gonna build that foundation. And we dug that hole, and we leveled that hole, and we compacted that hole, and then we put rebar in there so it's nice and strong. And then we convinced everybody that we were putting good cement in there so it'll be nice and solid, and nothing will crack, and nothing will crumble. And then we poured that slab recently because all of our churches reopened. Okay. Poured that slab and we smoothed that off and we set the pylons to grow from. We set the pylons. Okay. Now that cement's pretty thick. So in my business, you have to cure cement for at least 21 days. Okay. We have a little more than 21 days to cure that cement. And I got a job to finish because I made a goal to bring in 2,700 members into the Knights of Columbus. I never told you what that goal was, never. I always told you that I wanted to build can-do councils for Father and I want to build healthy councils for all of us. So tonight's the first, the first time I'm telling you it's 2,700. But the cool thing is, is we're at 2,300 right now. Mm -hmm. 2,300 men that we've changed their lives, we've entered their family, and we've affected their faith and affected their families during COVID, during COVID, okay? Now, Noel tried to pull off a really good joke about a train and a Tesla. Well, I'm a competitor, all of you know that, okay? I never scored a touchdown in my life, but I blocked for a whole bunch of guys that did. Yeah. All right? Every month I go on this D1 call with all the large jurisdictions, 
and I listen to these guys from Texas. They tell me about this Texas train. Okay? And every time I listen to them and I hear all this stuff about Texas, I say, well, you know what? Uh, we don't have a lot of trains in California, but we got some really, really fast electric cars. They call them Teslas. <laughs> and, uh, and my state secretary, one of my, my state secretary's wife. I thought I thought I'd talk about you, Fanny, first. She has one of those cars. Fanny has I me. Mean, Noel has the payment for that car. And, and bro, I I know where you're coming from because I have a very nice car too, and uh, and I drive a work truck. Uh, so I tell that guy from Texas, you know, you enjoy that train and all that smoke and all that rattling around until you see that Tesla go by you at about 180 miles an hour. <laughs> and, uh, and I haven't been able to do that because, you know, they're doing things different in Texas. Uh, and they're just worrying about this year. He's worrying about making his number because that's what Supreme drives in to a state debt. But I'm not concerned about me making my number. Because I got no chance, no chance at that. But if I do my job right, make, finish that that slab, and set that foundation, then Noel and Renee and Greg and Jim, I mean Larson, and, and, and Brother Ken, and guys after them will all make their goal. All make their goal because what they'll do different than we've done in the in the past, and we've had some great past state deputies in the past, but we've got to focus more on our faith. You hear that from all the priests. We've got to focus on our faith, but as I've told all my officers, everyone in this room has a different faith journey. We have to respect that. We have to respect that. We have to honor that. Okay? But if we give a good example out there, a good Catholic example, to everyone out there, they'll want to be one of us. <coughs> they want to be one of us. We got a new one tonight, just over dinner. Yeah. A good Catholic boy from San Francisco, engaged to a good Catholic girl, okay? And she's gonna watch after him, so he he stays on the right and narrow. And, and, and takes this past state deputy to, to Napa like he promised. <laughs> Two years ago. <laughs> and then uh, then this journey that Jane and I have taken you know it started uh, a long time in fact I think I, I told all of you guys about this uh, in, in Friday morning's mass the day I met Father John and the day he changed my life and uh, the man is just awesome uh, I uh, he is uh, what do you say about him I, you know he's been a chaplain for everybody for the last four or five years, all right? And he'll be a chaplain in the near future because they're not gonna let a guy like that set in the, set in the weeds, okay? He is, uh, he's one of us, but so are the other three. And I'm talking about you, man. <laughs> so are the other three because they've, do they've dedicated their lives to our faith and to us. To watch over us and to give us that thing we call a mass. Because without them, there isn't a mass. Okay? And that's what our RSVP program is all about, is to make sure there's more of them. More of them going forward. Uh, so last night all of you got a dose of uh, of the high times. And I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Y'all got to meet my friend Jay, and uh, I ask y'all to still keep praying for his mom. She had a good day today, a good day. So uh, we take it a day at a time for Stella. Take it a day at a time. But uh, as everyone in this room knows, uh, I kind of love Special Olympics, and we're honored here to have the CEO for Special Olympics Northern California, the CEO for Special Olympics Southern California and the guy that was the CEO for Southern California for a long time, 
Now, Bill and I go back to when he was the athletic director at Long Beach State. He was a younger guy then. <laughs> he had different color hair. I think I had different color hair. But you know what? We uh, we saw him, and we we felt his heart, and and they hired him as the CEO of Southern California Special Olympics. And uh, from that day to today, Special Olympics Southern California is the premier group of Special Olympics all across the nation, and that's because of that. Yeah. Here I want to talk just a bit about what we all did this year. Uh, Larson, where's Larson? Stand up, Larson. You know, uh, when I became the programs director for Ed, Ed said, you know, you can't be the Special Olympics chairman no more. And I said, oh my God, I, uh, I got to find me somebody. And I thought, well, that dude from Southern Cal that uh, that comes out to summer games all the time, and, and he's always got a smile on his face. And, he never says no. I said, I'll just con him. And I'll just, <laughs> I'll just push him. And so Jim took over Special Olympics that year, and he built a program that I had dreamed about for years. But that program is statewide now, and that's Feed the Athlete program across the state. And one day soon, if I'm lucky enough to, to go back to Connecticut, uh, I'm going <laughs> to tell them about our program. <laughs> and ask them how come that's not across the country because it ought to be it ought to be because uh, you know as we've said about family as we've said about family uh, Eunice Kennedy Schreiber started Special Olympics and she started Special Olympics so her daughter not her daughter her sister could have a experience to just be with other folks be with you know, like-minded people that she could do a little competing and play volleyball and kick around and do some things, just to take care of her sister. And she made up this idea of having a little, like, picnic in her backyard. Now she, her last name was Kennedy, so that backyard was kind of big, yeah. uh, on a bluff, you know, with a view of the ocean. But that's not a bad thing, because that helped grow this whole organization. But that's not where I'm getting to. She said to herself, I can't do this by myself. I need volunteers. I need people to help me put this all on. So as she was sitting at the dinner table that night, she looked over at her husband, Sergeant Trevor, and said, honey, I want to do this thing for my sister. Will you help me out? And he says, sure. I'll get the guys from the council and we'll come on down and we'll help you out. Because he was a fourth degree brother tonight. So that's where the first volunteer came for Special Olympics. A brother tonight. A brother tonight. And it's grown to this mega thing. Mega thing. And lots of people say, well, you know what? It's, uh, it's so big, uh, you know, we just can't be a part of that. And I, I say, shame on us for that on us for that because uh, they represent the tip of the spear when it comes to supporting people with intellectual disabilities and special needs. They're the tip of the spear. They're the ones that have plowed the road, plowed the way. And uh, if it wasn't for them, this whole movement would be nothing like it is today. So for what Eunice did for her sister and what you guys do for tens of thousands of people, in uh, California and across the nation. Thank you for taking care of those kids with special needs. Yeah. Because they've been a part of Jay and I's life for a long, long time. Long, long time. Jay used to joke with me all the time that he was going to marry Becky and he's going to be part of the family. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, Jay, Becky's a lot like me, man. You know, I don't know if you want to marry her. <laughs> and she's going to be telling you what to do all the time. And you don't like nobody. Even your mom tell you what to do. But he's been a member of our family for a long time. The kids from the Speech and Language Development Center have been a member of our family for a long time. Our daughter works there today. Started out at the bottom, and she's uh, now she's got her own parking place. <laughs> so I would say, you know, you're, you're somebody if you've got a parking place. Okay? Jenny's got a parking place. Okay. So, 
it's been an interesting time, an interesting time. But I'd like to call my, my dear friends up here from Special Olympics for a minute so uh, they can say a few words to you and then we're gonna have a short presentation uh, to represent something that you guys have already done. I'm going to start my remarks. I don't normally do this, so bear with me. I have, with an email that I received tonight during this event. E-membership registration. Welcome, <laughs> Brother Knight. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> that. I think that's the first time I've, I've ever done that before. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm so pleased that this never happens to me. My fiance is here, Ann Friedrich. And, and we, uh, we're going to get married in October at Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Patterson, in California. Yeah. Oh. So I just want to echo Steve's remarks in terms of Eunice. I had Eunice in my remarks as well about Camp Shriver, but it's really about inclusion, right? That's Special Olympics in our work is about, uh, you know, inclusion and, and really fostering and transforming the communities we serve to inspire people throughout the world to open their hearts and minds and to accept and include people with intellectual disabilities. And that's really what we're all about. And I love this partnership with the Knights of Columbus. I, I truly do. And this is why. Because not only are you helping us move towards a more inclusionary world, but you emphasize the value and dignity of each human life. And that's really special to me. People with intellectual disabilities are touched by the Lord and deserve as rich and full of life as everybody else. Amen. Amen. So we're a sports organization, but we really are about social change. And I talked about our vision around inclusion, and of course we provide year-round sports training, athletic competition, and variety of Olympic type sports for children and adults with intellectual disabilities, giving them continuing opportunities to develop physical fitness, demonstrate courage, experience joy, and participate in the sharing of gifts, skills, and friendship with their families. And of course, a lot of you see that as you come to our events and participate in the Feed the Athletes program. And this year, you know, I want to echo all the, all the other speakers that have spoken tonight. This, we all know what 2020 was. I mean, I remember pre-COVID, we served over 27,000 athletes had over 132,000 students in over 500 schools and 14 sports and over 300 competitions. So I remember when COVID hit, we were reacting, right? We were reacting and we we're canceling all our events, we we're canceling all our competitions and our staff, you know, we, it was a dramatic shift for us because we had to change everything that we did and create this virtual suite of programs. So we had everything online, summer games at home, schools at home, health and fitness at home. So our staff created over 600 hours of virtual programming for our athletes to keep them occupied, to keep them safe, to reinforce the things that they had to do to get through COVID because you know our athletes are used to routines and they, they need to be connected and not isolated. And so we were able to do that. And a big part of that is because of your support. And so you really stepped up this year um, through Steve's leadership. And Jim, I want to thank you too. I, I don't know what you want well enough yet to call you Larson. So I'm going to call you Jim. <laughs> but I want to thank the State Council and all the officers for their support for the Feed the Athletes program. I also want to thank Ray Warner, the president of the Frank Nigro Columbian Foundation. Ray, thank you for your support. But it made a big deal, it, was, it made a big difference for us because we dramatically lost a lot of revenue in 2020. It really impacted us. The state of California eliminated our funding and that was 37% of our budget. And so we, we, had, we had to cut two million out of our operating budget in Northern California, so it was a big deal. So for the, for the Knights to step up and to provide that additional support for us was, was very significant. And we've got a lot going. I mean, we, and we're, we're excited as we come back. You know, these are some of the events. Rockland Track and Field Regional, the Walnut Creek Softball Regional, Yuba Sutter, 
Sacramento flag football, and we're looking forward to the summer games as well. We have our virtual summer games at home, and I know the Knights are gonna be engaged in that. And then the Charity Sporting Clay Shoot event is gonna be in November too, so we'll have that. So everybody that's in the room, and thank you for that. So again, from the bottom of my heart, I'm gonna introduce, um, I'm gonna introduce Calvin here in a second, but I wanna leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Benedict, from Pope Benedict, I have to do this. Alms giving according to the gospel is not mere philanthropy. Rather, it's a concrete expect, expression of charity, a theological virtue that demands interior conversion to love of God and neighbor in imitation of Jesus Christ who dying on the cross gave his entire self for us. And really, that's what the nights are all about. And so I can't I can never thank you for all your support. And I want to introduce my colleague Calvin Lyons, who's the president and CEO of Special Olympics of Southern California. We've worked together for a long time. Calvin, come on up. Hello everyone, and thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to just say thank you. You know, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, and it has no shadow of eternity. You have been a gift to me. I've been on board for six months. I have never experienced an athletic event, but I am looking forward to it. It's been a very interesting transition, and you'll hear from uh, Bill Schumar, my, my best friend in the world now. He is my new BFF about our transition and how under COVID uh, we've been making it work. One of the first things I tried to do was call board members and get to know folks who have been supportive. And they told me I needed to talk to this guy named Bolton. I said, what? Steve Bolton? I said, yeah, he's a, he's a board, he's, he's just a, an amazing guy. And a few weeks ago, I had the first unmasked vaccinated lunch with Bolton and Larson. I can say that. Because I can <laughs> you know, I'm so grateful for them and their support. And just the encouragement is, Calvin, it's going to be okay. You can get out there and get this done. And the encouragement of my friends from Northern California and Bill is a great road paver and a transition expert. And great support, too, because I'm not engaged anymore. My wife, for 35 years, is there. And we knew each other for five and a half months. And it has been wonderful. Julie, thank you for all you do. And, and I listen to you and I listen to your example because when I called uh, Steve on the phone, Zoom phone, you're in the background. He was bragging about you. He was talking about you. And I'm seeing how excited people are about family and community building and community support. So I'm excited. They told me I had to go in the middle. I'm the newest guy here, so I had to be on and off. Now, Kermit the Frog, it's not easy being green when you're looking at me. <laughs> But, uh, but they're breaking me in. They're, they're being as gentle as they can be. But I just wanted to connect to an example that you gave, Steve. I think about the parable of the talents in 10, 2, 1, and somebody buried theirs. You buried concrete in a hole to build people up to get to the next level. Everyone else, all the things that you're giving, all of the ways that the Lord has provided for you to steward his resources and to bless others. All I can say is how grateful we are for it. Thank you. Keep it the good working. We are fortunate to be your partner. <laughs> Next up, Bill Schumar, my, my, again, my BFF, President Emeritus. Boys and girls, I mean, special <laughs> witness. <laughs> I was there for a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. Good evening, everybody. I'll be brief. But uh, we are in great hands. In fact, that guy's pretty biblical, isn't he? Did you hear that? He's pretty, you guys going to like him. <laughs> Calvin, what an honor. Seamless transition, working with a guy like David Solo, and I think the best servant leader I've ever met in the word of Steve. Steve, congratulations on a great, great career service with the Knights and all that you've done as a leader. Uh, worthy Jim, the boots on the ground these last few years, uh, and all of you. You know, our faith does teach us the three T's, time, talent, and treasure. It also teaches us to be salt and light in a lost and dying world. Boy, are we needed now. I don't know anybody that, that shakes their salt and shines their light better than you guys. Better than you guys. It's been an honor to serve with you. My biggest honor, my biggest honor, and look at the picture of Frank Nigro over there. I was asked seven years ago to become the first non-Catholic to sit on that board. 
Frank and I had some deep discussions, theological discussions. <laughs> he finally let me know that I was probably going to heaven, but I was in a slower lane. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell that was okay. That was okay. But my true highlight, my, my true highlight, Father John would, uh, always opens and closes our meetings in prayer. And one time he had to leave early, and, and Worthy Ray was leading the meeting as president. And he said, we, we would like our evangelical brother, Bill, to close us in prayer today. What, what an honor. So we all stood and Worthy Tim, I think you were standing right next to me because we prayed, we all said amen and we, we raised our heads. Tim said to me, he said, that was a heck of a prayer. Are you sure you're not Catholic? <laughs> I said, no, but I'm hanging around a lot. God bless. On the grand like So I looked at Ray and I can give it special numbers. Give special. 